Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I thought I escaped uh, Campbell. <laughs> Saw some Campbell members here. <laughs> um, it's always good to be here in this church. I love the uh, the closeness, the intimate setting of this church. It's it's always uh, nice to be in a small church and uh, where everybody is known. And uh, everybody has a very close relationship. Um, my uh, sermon title is uh, the Cer- uh, birthday celebration. Uh, do we have any birthdays here today? Anyone? This week? No? This month? <laughs> okay. All right, good. So at Campbell, we have a tradition that they actually they publish the uh, the names of the the, the people, uh, and then during potluck, they, um, uh, they you know they do a happy birthday song and they have a cake for that. Um, I was uh, my family is big and and so is my wife's family, uh, and they are always always you know some kind of birthdays going on. Um, Every week there are certain things, and then sometimes you know they are like you know they they want to make it bigger, um, so there there are uh, birthday parties, and so so I just looked it up. Do you know that there are eleven thousand baby boomers who are turning fifty every day <laughs> in in North America? And the average person, the average person in 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 America, um, gets eight birthday cards and four birthday gifts. Um, I don't get that. So I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking that there must be you know someone else who's getting more than that you know because I didn't get that right. Um, but I, this is what I think. I think the the younger you you are, uh, the more gifts and birthday cards you, you you get, and then the older you you know, and then you kind of you don't want to actually you don't want to remember that. Um, I remember when I was uh, small. Um, I have an uncle, uh, and we very close. You know, both our families, and uh, the. So I got some uh, cousins, and you know, a lot of times, you know, so they they have birthdays. But the strange thing is that they don't celebrate their birthdays. Um, so one day, you know, I was like asking my uncle, "Hey, you know, uh, Dio, why why are you not celebrating, you know, birthdays for?" And then so then he he gave me a lecture. Uh, actually, I, I just totally didn't expect that. And he said, "Oh, you know, you, you know what? You, you should be really thankful. You know, your um, your birthday is the most painful day of you know your your mother. Your your mother when she had you, and and then she gave me like uh, he gave me a, a you know a a really long lecture. And I go, you know, where did that come from? So later on, I found out that." Um, he um, he's a younger brother of my dad, and and when he was born, uh, my grandmother actually had a very very difficult uh, childbirth, and actually at the end she died because of you know the childbirth. Um, so that's why he never never celebrated uh, his birthdays, and not only that you know he kind of forbid you know his children to celebrate birthdays, you know, because of, you know, how, how he uh, perceived um, the birthdays would be. Um, but anyway, um, if you were asked to throw a birthday party, what would you, what would you do? What would you think? You know, those of you who are organizers, you know, it's like immediately you think about what are the things that you need to do, right? 
give me something. Um, cake. So you gotta have a cake. You gotta have food and drinks. Balloons. Gifts. Gifts. People. Who's that? People. <laughs> you gotta have you. Otherwise, you know, you have a birthday party just by yourself, right? Um, family members, your know, people, um, and that's what we normally think, right? So I, I I went to search, you know, on the internet. Hey, you know, how to throw a successful birthday party? And it says, you know, there are like different lists. You know, there are like really, you know, some give long, long lists. You know. That's one which says uh, you gotta have a cake, you gotta have a theme, you gotta have games, you gotta have uh, decorations, you gotta have favors, you gotta have presents, and you gotta have thank you notes. Well, I go, wow, that's that's all stuff that you have to remember. Uh, and then another list goes like this: you gotta have food and drinks, activities, cake, decorations, party favors. Is it party favors? I you know, I never had that uh, you know back in my my home country. I think it's a, an American uh, invention. You know, party favors. I go, what is this? You know, it's so everybody gets like a little thing. Uh, another list goes like this. You know, you gotta have invitations, cake, gifts, and you gotta have family members. Almost. Every single list has cake in it, so I think cake is definitely in, right? And then I think, uh, and also every list uh, has presents or gifts, so gifts is definitely in. Um, not all the lists have people in it, so so that may or may not be in, right? Um, why am I talking birthday celebrations? Uh, if you remember last time we talked about, you know, I, I'm actually, you know, um, going through um, the feast days right now uh, with you. you know, we, we, we started last time when I was here, the Passover. You remember that? And, and if you remember what the Passover represented, What does Passover represent? Well, it represents, you know, first of all, the sacrifice of Christ. And a question for you. When did Jesus die? On the Passover, thank you. On the Passover day. Yeah, he, he died, you know, and, and matter of fact, the um, last time we reviewed this, you know, the, the scripture said that they had a meal, right? Remember that? They went to, um, to, to get a, you know, the upper room ready, and they had a meal. But in fact, that wasn't the Passover meal. That was the preparation for the Passover. So that was one, actually one day before. And then the next day, Jesus was nailed on the cross. And he died exactly the same time that when the Passover lamb was supposed to be killed. And matter of fact, that happened, you know, that was going to happen when the priest was going to kill the, the Passover lamb. And the curtain was torn from top to bottom, right? Remember that? Yes. And then the lamb got away. But Jesus, the Passover, the real Passover lamb, was killed. All right. So that was the Passover. The next feast day, actually, there are three feast days. They all go in succession, you know, one day after another. The next day, it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All right. And on that day, you're supposed to you know, take out all the leaven, uh, meaning yeast, you know, and then you, you you need to make the bread without yeast. What does that represent? So think about you know 
you know, in terms of Jesus. So all the, the fifth stage, we have to think in terms of Jesus. So if, if Jesus died on Passover day, and then the next day was what? That was Sabbath, and then he stayed in the grave. So the, un, the Feast of Unleavened Bread represents that, or has the significance that Jesus was the unleavened bread. He has no sin. Le leaven represents sin. And he has no sin. He stayed in the grave. And then the next day, we have still another feast. That is the feast of the first fruits. Now, what happened with Jesus the next day? He rose from the grave. He became the first one. First, not that, you know, he was like first in history to be resurrected from, from, from death. Because, you know, in Sabbath school, actually, you know, we, we discussed this, right? A few people actually, you know, were, were resurrected prior to, you know, to Jesus' uh, resurrection. But he was first because he's the first. He is first as in his first in prominence, right? And he's the first without sin. So the... Um, that feast represents, it's called a feast of first fruits, and sometimes it's called a, a feast of um, waving the sheaf. That also marks the beginning of a harvest in the Jewish calendar. Then we come to the next feast, and which is what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, that's the theme today which is the Feast of Weeks. Sometimes it's called the Pentecost. All right, so let's go to uh, Leviticus chapter 23. We, uh, we read this in our scripture reading. Leviticus chapter 23. And I just realized that I missed uh, one verse in my when I sent the um, um, the scripture reading to to Rachel. Uh, we should start with uh, verse fifteen. So uh, chapter twenty three of Leviticus, uh, verse th uh, fifteen, it says that you shall count. You shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seven Sabbaths shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Um, fifty days, or seven Sabbaths plus one. <coughs> It should be counted from the, the, the second feast, which is the, um, the waving of the, the sheaf. And what do you do for this uh, particular feast day? And first of all, you know, what, what does it represent? You know, the, it's, it's sometimes called the, the feast of weeks. Um, so after 50 days, if, if the, the waving of the sheaf represents the start of the harvest, Pentecost represents the end of the harvest. So during this time, they were supposed to, you know, get all their their harvest together, um, and it's a celebration of sorts. Uh, it's a joyous occasion. It's not like you know very solemn, uh, like the Passover. It's not solemn like you know in you know some of the feasts that we're going to be talking about. The Day of Atonement is very solemn, so you know you, you're not supposed to you know be showing too much joy. But this particular feast day, the Pentecost, you are supposed to be joyful. You're supposed to be really happy about this. It is a celebration of sorts. And if you fast forward um, that to the, to the New Testament, 
we also realize that Pentecost represents something else, right, in the New Testament. And matter of fact, this is what we're going to be studying next quarter in the Sabbath school. Right? The, we're going to be studying the early church. What happened on the, on the day of Pentecost? The Holy Spirit came down mightily. You know, remember, you know, Jesus uh, went up to heaven how many days before Pentecost? It was about 10 days before um, Pentecost. You know, Jesus, after his resurrection, spent 40 days on earth, appearing to various disciples. By the way, uh, in Sabbath school this morning, you know, we, you know, some of us you know, we talked about the first fruits. There were certain people who also were raised together with, with Jesus Christ, right? What happened to those people? So they appeared, apparently they appeared to you know, different people, and then it was not mentioned again. What happened to them? Um, let me show you a verse. Uh, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. This is actually talking about Jesus when he, um, after he was resurrected and then he ascended to heaven. Verse 8 of Ephesians chapter 4. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto man. Do you have another version in your Bible? <laughs> All right. Um, some actually, some version which would give a more accurate uh, um, representation. It actually says that the original text says that he led multitudes of captives to heaven. Which means... You know, those of, uh, those of the people who were resurrected together with Jesus also went up to heaven. All right? So, so that is the kind of the proof. You can also look it up in Psalms chapter 68, verse 18. It's a, it's a similar verse. The, uh, Ephesians here is actually quoting that, that particular verse. But... Jesus went up to heaven and then he gave the disciples, the apostles, the disciples a charge. You know, stay in Jerusalem, don't go anywhere and wait for the promise. Wait for the promise of what? Wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And in 10 days, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to them. So we can see that Pentecost, you know, apart from the old in the Old Testament, it has a meaning. It has the meaning of being the end of the harvest or to celebrate the harvest. In the New Testament, it's also a celebration of the harvest. But this time, it's harvesting people, right? The Holy Spirit. And, and a lot of times, you know, people say that Pentecost in the New Testament, that is the birthday of the church. That is the birthday of the church. That's why I titled my uh, sermon, The Birthday Celebration. Pentecost, the day of Pentecost is kind of a birthday celebration. In a birthday, you have a cake. That is like you know the the only thing. You, you, you know, if you if you don't have you know anything, if you bring out a birthday cake, that's a birthday celebration. 
Is that right? Um, so when we read this in Leviticus chapter 23, it says that on the, uh, on the day of Pentecost, you're supposed to bring two loaves of bread as an offering. What do you bake it with? It says, you know, it gives you a, a list of things. You know, it gives you, you know, flour, water, and there's something else in here. Yeast, leaven, right? So th remember, you know, in the beginning of the, uh, in the other feast day, you're not supposed to have yeast because that represents sin. But that also represents the works of man. Why would, you know, in the offering here, that the Lord allow yeast to be in this particular, um, in the making of the bread? Remember what I just said? Yeast represents the works of man. The, in the Pentecost, they were praying together. Even they were imperfect. They joined together. They fellowship together. They ate bread together. That is the works of man. Even though they were imperfect, the works of man joined together with the works of God the Lord would honor that, the effort that we put in. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. What else is there in a birthday celebration? In the birthday celebration, a must-have it's the present, it's the gift. And we can see that on the day of Pentecost, there is the gift. There is the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to point you out to something. Uh, turn with me to uh, Exodus. Exodus, we kind of studied this last time uh, when we studied the Passover. Exodus uh, chapter, chapter 12. Verse 1, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, it says here, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh, um, so before this, the Jews, they didn't have a calendar. They did have some kind of calendar which was developed you know, you know, from the Egyptians. Um, that would be a civil calendar. However, you know, the Lord started a new calendar with them. And then he, the Lord said, this day, it will be the New Year Day. And then in two weeks after that, and we can see that if you go down to uh, verse 6, then you will see that, you know, he, uh, the Lord then said, on the 14th day it will be the Passover, all right? So we all, we, um, the first day, it's always actually a new moon. Uh, they, they go by a lunar calendar, uh, the, the Jewish and then so on the Passover day, that would be, you know, if, if the first day is the new moon, then on Passover, which is the 14th day, that would be the what? A full moon, right? right you're very quiet today. Um, on that day, they were supposed to, you, you know, right after that, you know, on, on the day after, they were, you know, to, to go out from Egypt. But let's take a look at this. Um, 
Let's take a look at Exodus 19. Exodus 19, verse 1. Remember the day of Pentecost is always the 50th day from the waving of the sheaf, right? Second feast. So that would be, you count 50 days from the, the 15th of, let's say January, but it's not January. It's, uh, it's called you know, the, the, the month of Abit or, or Nisan. Right, the, but the first month. Um, Exodus 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they unto the wilderness of Sinai. So they gather in Sinai. If you look a little bit after that, the next chapter, you will realize that this is the time that the Decalogs, the Ten Commandments, were given to them, all right? The third month. So if you count from the first month to the third month, the first day of the third month, how many days have elapsed? So you got the first month, you got 15 days left, and then you got the the second month, which you have another 30 days, so that's 45 days, right? And then if you go through this chapter, chapter 19 of Exodus, you will find out that they actually have a few day, days to prepare. And then Moses came down with the, the Ten Commandments. The Jewish tradition has it that when the Ten Commandments were given to them. That was the day of Pentecost. We sometimes we don't talk about that. But think about this. This is the day when they, had, they saw the fire. They saw the smoke and fire in the mountain in Mount Sinai. And Moses came down. And that was like shaking. That was earthquake, right? In the New Testament... There is smoke and there's fire. Fire came down from heaven. And then there was the shaking on the day of Pentecost. The first covenant was given to them um, on the day of Pentecost. But they broke the covenant shortly. Right? You know, remember that? They, they worshipped the, the idol. The, they made the, you know, uh, uh, brazen ox, right? And, and, and they broke it. They broke that covenant right away. So in Jeremiah, let's, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. Verses 31 to 33. Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 33. It says here, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God. And they shall be my people. The, on the day of Pentecost... In the New Testament, a new covenant was given to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has written the laws in their hearts. That is the gift of the birthday celebration. Uh, 
if you have to distill down to like three things, you know, for a birthday celebration, you gotta have the cake, you gotta have the gift. What would be the third thing that that you would have? Decorations? No, people. You gotta have people. Well, you gotta have yourself, right? You know, so we, I'm, you know, thinking about it just on my, you know, from my, on my own. So I have the cake, I have the gifts, <laughs> but I don't have anyone to celebrate with me. That would be really, really sad. That would not be a celebration, would it? On the on the day of Pentecost. The birthday celebration was with other people. 3,000 were brought into the church. Uh, turn again, once again, to uh, Leviticus, you know, what we have just read. Leviticus chapter 23. Once again. Let's read the last verse, 21. Verse 21. Leviticus 23. So, and ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be a holy convocation with you, and ye shall do no service work thereof, and it shall be a statue forever in your dwelling throughout your generations. Next verse. Note. And when ye reap the harvest of your of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. What does that mean? Don't take everything, right? Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Leave some to the strangers. The day of Pentecost, it's also important that we think about the strangers. Who are the strangers in the spiritual sense? They are those who are not in the house of Israel or house of Judah yet, right? The strangers are those who are outside still waiting to be harvested. Day of Pentecost. Um, we are, in essence, we are living. So every feast day has a um, spiritual calendar, you know, it has a meaning. We are essentially living between the day of Pentecost and the next feast, the day of trumpet. So we are in between here. The start of this period, you know, the Lord said, think about the strangers. Think about those who have not received the word yet. Think about those who have not received the, the gospel. I'm going to close with this. Uh, Exodus chapter 22. Chapter 22. Verses 20 to 21. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. And actually, you know, there are a list of verses in the Old Testament, in, in particular in, in the Torah, in the five books of, of, of Moses, that talk about that essentially the Lord gave instructions to the Israelites not to oppress the strangers, not only not to oppress them. You know, in one verse it actually says that you have to love them. And then you are supposed to treat them nice because why? The Lord always uses the reason that remember you were a stranger once. 
Remember, you were once not saved. We as spiritual Israelites, that is the same charge to us. Think about the strangers. Think about those who have not received the, the gospel yet because we were once unsaved. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you've given us the day of Pentecost. And you've given us a charge to go out and spread this gospel and, and make known this knowledge to all the, the other people. And indeed, we are living in this last day. So I pray that you will inspire us and you will empower us. You will grant us the Holy Spirit because He is indeed the gift. He is the gift of this birthday celebration. Be with us now as we depart, but not from your presence, Lord. We pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ.